be making basics. What's going on YouTube, Be Making Basics, back again with another dope video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because we're coming back to back with bangers. Today's video, I'm going to be going over, um, Logic, I'm going to call this video Logic Pro 11 for beginners. So just kind of going over where everything's at for people who are brand new to Logic Pro 11, some of the stuff you can kind of, you know, what you can do and stuff like that. So if you're new, like I said, get subscribed, man. Um, also, make sure you check out my site, BeMakingBasics.com. But anyway... Um, let's just get started here. When you first open up Logic, you're going to be able to create a track. You can create, you know, MIDI track that's going to get, you know, allow you to access different instruments. We got Amosphere here. Um, some of the stock stuff is like Alchemy. Then you got all these different other sound banks and a default patch here. Then we have a pattern track that you can create. This is going to be where you can step in patterns. This is great for drums. This is great for even melodies. And then you can also go in here and choose, you know, different aspects of uh, the library and the sounds <clears throat> in Logic Pro 11. Then they also got um, a track you can create. It's a session player. And basically what these will do, you got a drummer, you got a bass and a keyboard player. And they will, you can pretty much edit some pre-existed samples. We'll call it samples because that's kind of like what it is. But you can edit these on the fly, which is pretty dope. And then, of course, we have our audio track. So I'm actually going to start with the session player just to show you all what that's about. You can choose the drummer style here. Um, we got everything from boom bap to techno to trap. We'll start with this trap one. So this is a session player right here. And as you see, we have different knobs and stuff like this. So you can push this up make the pattern more complex and you can see that it changes in here change the intensity which would be like how strong it hits all right and then you can also like like click these on and off and then also change how much goes into it the, the uh, complexity etc cetera, etc cetera. so put some of that stuff in then you do swing and i really like this is because it's like on the fly so it's an easy way to edit and start with something and then edit it quickly and then basically make it your own got different details here you can um, mess with the phrase variation turn it up down stuff like that humanize it kind of take it off the grid a little bit and a cool thing here I can like right click this and then go to bounce in place or you can push control B and now this is going to create like a um, audio version of this so now I can use this as an audio file do, do a lot of cool things okay so that's one thing I wanted to show y'all next we'll go over here and start with the pattern um, let's just show you how you can use the pattern to create your own melody. If I go to the default patch here, create, then you have these different options here. I can come over here and select, let's say like a synthesizer. And now that's going to change what you see here. You see the different notes from C all the way to C. So it's basically a whole octave here. You can come over here and change the actual key. So we can just C sharp. You can come over here and change from major to minor or any of the other uh, options here. We'll just go natural minor.
So that's one way to, you know, create. Um, let's say if you wanted to create your own like pattern using the steps uh, sequencer or the pattern track, you can basically go ahead and select the pattern track. Um, let me do that over again, actually. Because I wanted to show you how you can drag and drop your own drum sounds in here real quick if you're brand new. Basically, you select the pattern track and then under instrument, we're going to scroll down to quick sampler. You can go stereo or mono. Since we're doing drums, it's probably going to be a good way to do mono. Let's say we wanted to put a snare in here. All you have to do is just open this up. You can go anywhere to get a snare, you know, or whatever. You can go even to, you know, your Apple loops up there at the top right. Um, we can go instrument. We can go drum kits. Um, we can go genre, hip hop, and I can grab a snare out of this. Let me just, let me show you how to grab it out of actual beat. So let's grab that like kind of clap. Just drag this in like so. Um, take this loop off. And then I'm going to hold down option and, and uh, zoom in here. I'll push command K just to get my keyboard up. So we can just see exactly where that, that clap is. So I'm just going to take this point right here, move that right there. It's not going to be able to really, you know, catch it all the way unless you take this point at the very end. Let's hold it down, option. Now I have a clap or some type of a snares type sound, and I can come in here. And a trick when you open up your um, your pattern for the snare is dead center. Click right there. It's automatically going to create a snare pattern. Or a, or a clap pattern, if you will. Now you can also um, drag and drop in like um, other instruments from like say splice or something like that so we can just double click or just click on this quick sampler after you open it up so let's go to splice real quick I'm gonna grab um, my hi-hat so I'm gonna come over here and just type in hat we got different genres here um, or I can just go here and go genre trap we'll just get a hi-hat from here Let's say we want that one. You gotta click on the credit, add it to the credit right there if you're using Splice, and then just drag and drop. And this is the same process like if you get like, you know, download somebody's pack, download this pack from Beatmaker Basics or some other producer, you just open the pack up and just drag and drop it right in here. You can save it by going up here where it says default preset, go save as, and then it'll populate down here. But uh, let's get back in here, push enter, bring that playhead to the beginning. And let's just talk about how you can create your own hi-hats. So you want to start off every other one. And if you look over here, they got steps. So it goes from 16 steps to 32 or 64. It'll give you more options. I'm going to go to 64 steps. And then you can click this guy and change some variations here. From gate, you can go note. And you can go repeat right here. And you can do some cool stuff. So let's check it out. So like repeat, if I push this up like that, it's going to basically chop the note up. All right. And then like with the note, if I take the note down, it will take it down a note. And as you can see, I'm going to the different sections here as I'm creating it. You can do some cool stuff with like the velocity as well. So this is a quick way to, you know, get patterns started using that pattern um, option. 
Um, the option I use probably like the most is this MIDI option right here. This is where we can just pretty much manually do everything. Um, let's talk about Alchemy. If you're brand new, Alchemy is the sound bank. It's like a stock sound bank. It has like thousands of sounds that you can use. So we'll just click that, click uh, MIDI, push create. And then if I click on that, it's gonna open up Alchemy. And this is Alchemy. So literally you can just search be a category, subcategory, genre, timbre, and pick your instrument. Let me actually go to something different. Let me go urban, let me go bright, let me go somewhere other than bass. All right, and the cool thing about Alchemy is you can come in here and edit the sound. So I can take this and move this around or just click right on one of these. You can actually affect it here as well. Take the decay down. You know, and just a mess around with these until you get the sound you want. They have an arpeggiator. Um, you can control that and manipulate that. Different effects. Say if you don't want the distortion or delay on it. And you can uh, save your sound by coming up here to the sound, like basically the same place, and do save as, and then your sounds will come up here. So this is one of my sounds I created. I call it Star Crystal. And I pretty much just took one of the stock sounds and edited it. So, yeah, from there, you know, you can come in here and play another pattern like the compliment, compliment what you have. obviously R you can push R to record let me just cl close out of this so you can see what's going on all right and then two one thing you can do when you're actually using like to say your MIDI um, you can double click on it and it'll pull up your piano roll and this is where you'll edit your uh, MIDI files or your MIDI notes. So if you click in the grid and then push command A, it's going to allow you to highlight everything and then you can come over here to the left and do time quantitize. Um, you know what I'm saying? Depending on the size or the length of the notes will be depending on your quantization metric. I'm going to do one over eight, just like an eighth note metric. And then pretty much just with those tools, with what I've showed you, you can pretty much come in here and just start cooking up. I mean, you have all these different options here. This is another cool thing you can do with the drummer track, right? Um, let's double click on that. My bad. Um, oh, the reason why this is not working is because I turned it into audio. So let me just delete that real quick. All right. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, if you want to mute and unmute things in the workspace window, push Control M. And I'm just going to double click that and it's going to pull this back over here. So, what I was going to show you is actually you can just take one instrument out of this. So, like, let's say if we want to just mute out all of the rest of these, and now I just have like this kick. And then what you can do if you want to get rid of the other stuff is take um, 
take out the complexity a little bit um, on certain things. So. take that feel amount completely out if you don't want any other instruments to play but see now I got a kick and I actually I should be able to yeah convert this to MIDI region so check this out what I can do now is convert this to MIDI region and now that it's a MIDI file I can come over here and create a new MIDI track with the quick sampler and then drag and drop a new kick into it so I'm not gonna actually uh, look for it I might use one of the kicks I already have uh, we'll get this bricks kick this is one of my favorite kicks but I can take this now and turn it down here I might have to come over here and uh, highlight everything and grab the uh, go down to the velocity turn it up Another thing you might also have to do is move the notes up a couple of octaves and instead of having to just click on it and bring it up, I'm going to teach you a quick shortcut. Um, if you push shift option and up, it takes it up an octave or down, down, shift option up. So basically, I'm just showing you different ways that you you can create, even if you're a beginner. You know what I'm saying? So that's a pretty good, I think, a pretty good start, like just to get going with this. Um, I also will show you one other thing with the quick sampler. So let's just say if we want to like sample something or use an actual like a soul sample, if you will. And you want to pitch it and then make it match the actual key of this so what we can do we can go into splice and we can say soul sample and it's going to pull up all the soul samples um, one little trick here if you go to one shot and loops if you click on loops it will more likely only play like um, a loop <laughs> and you can also type melody in here or find it down here and it will only pull up the melodies so that will take you know save you some time as far as like you know with um, going through drum loops compared to melody loops let me go ahead and actually put this on like a um, trap genre here Oh no, we were trying to put a soul sample on it, my bad. Kinda got lost on here. So we'll go hip hop. I don't know how I'm gonna really fit this into this beat, but we're gonna drag and drop it in here just to kind of show y'all what we got going here. So when you click right here, this like sideways or horizontal um, hourglass, that should lock this in place and follow the tempo that you have here. So I have 150. This sample was at 90, so. So we will follow the tempo. And then from here, I just have it um, in this classic mode right here. This is gonna play the sample all the way through. Um, you can reverse it, but I usually keep it forward. And so now I'm gonna play the beat and then just go up and down the keyboard until I find uh, the key.
before that. And then we can come in here, double click in the or click in the grid, command A to highlight everything, and then click that Q to quantize it. Another cool thing you can do as well is right click on this and do force legato, and it'll instantly take the note to the to the beginning of the next note, so it makes it more smooth. <laughs> Then you can add like some effects to it if you want and come over here. Um, they have different windows as well. I should go over that as well. Like these guys at the top control different windows. So like this one is your um, library. This is your what we call inspector window. So like any of your tracks here that you click on, you can see it vertically here. This question mark is like going to be your quick help button if anything you scroll over when that's selected it will just tell you what it is and so for beginners this is going to be a great tool these are your tools uh, speaking of tools you come in there smart controls so you can affect a track and you know add some different um your own uh, vibe to it <laughs> Let's have some little controls here that you can, you know, some quick editing stuff. This is your mixer window, very important window, especially in Logic. But yeah, you can come over here in the mixer window and add like your own reverbs and stuff like that. Um, I'll do a stock one. This chroma verb is pretty dope. Do it like that. So yeah, this is that. Um, this is your editor. This is your transport window. You can take this playhead and move it around within your beat. Push play, record, stuff like that. Got that. You got the solo button. This is your count in, metronome, your events, markers, tempo, signature, a notes section, your loops, you know what I'm saying? Got a lot of loops in here. 30,000. Then you can access files in your computer that way. So this is a pretty good tutorial, I think, for a beginner and new someone new to Logic Pro 11. Just to kind of get you into the, the software and figure out where things are, figure out some ways to create, et cetera, et cetera, man. So if you like the video, make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you also share the video. Make sure you comment. You know, I read my comments. I try to respond to most of all of them if I can um, head over to my website bemakingbasics.com if you want to get th more thorough training I have courses on uh, my site you can purchase and I also have drum kits loop kits uh, mixing templates to help make the whole process of making beats easier specifically in like Logic Pro 10 and GarageBand so but the but the principles can apply to everything for the most part I mean but check it out um, but yeah, man, appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you in the next video. We're out.